little bit of an introduction. Um, my name is Matt Jepson, and I'm absolutely nobody. But uh, just like all of us, when we desire to participate in, in God's work, he gives us things to do, right? And, and I just love what you guys have been given to do, and that he has you actively engaged in his work. And um, for me, it's, it's no different. Um, I love my Savior, Jesus Christ, and I'm a witness of him. And I know that he has, he is very active right now. I feel a lot of urgency. We're going to talk about 2024 in particular today. But um, I know he's coming back. And I know he's coming back soon. And there's things to do. There are real things to do. We're not here to be spectators. We're not here to watch. We're not here to, to pick up popcorn and sit down and say, well, we'll just see what happens. There's active things for us to do. And I feel that so strongly all through me, I feel that. And so today, um, there's all kinds of things we could talk about um, in terms of preparing for his return. But today, there's just it, it's been interesting this week. Uh, uh, several things have stood out. Um, and this won't be in any way holistic, but there's definitely things I know he wants said today. So I'm going to try to get out of the way and um, go through some things. I guess really quick, um, a little bit more about me, you've lived here for seven years in uh, on Traverse Mountain, um, which is an interesting number of years. Let me talk about the sevens a little bit today. Uh, before that, I lived for 12 years in, um, in Jackson County, Missouri. And Ooh. during those 12 years, I, I was not thinking at all about why I was there. I just, it was just a job. I, I'm an attorney and I do the Missouri, I did the Missouri River uh, water wars up and down the Missouri River. Um, and did that for those 12 years, and then the Lord took us very clearly, brought us here seven years ago, and now I do the Colorado River and, and water wars and, and some other things um, up and down in Utah. But I, um, I know he led me to where I am. I know that he led each of you to where you are. We're where we are right now for very important purposes. You know who you know very, very real and important purposes. I'm a believer that especially as we get close to the return of the Savior, many of those who sit around us, many of those who live around us, were people we prepared with up there before we came. So, so this discussion is, uh, is going to be about him and his return. And like I said, I, I appreciate so much the work you all do for liberty and freedom. And for me... What we're looking forward to is the return of the King of Kings. And, and a government that is, is more perfect than any of the, the wonderful government we have, but a perfection of that. It's a terrestrial government, and it's under him. And I look forward to that, and I, I have nothing that I'm worried about losing um, in terms of what we live in, this celestial world. Everything's going to be better. When we think about what's ahead, we think about the millennium, I mean, everything's going to be better. So we're going to talk a little bit about fear and calamities. I know that there's, you know, that could be a temptation. But um, I just know that the future is glorious. We've been told that. The future is breathtaking. That's, that's what uh, President Nelson's told us. And I believe it. I, I absolutely believe it. And um, we really need to be looking forward with gladness is coming. So to begin, I want to talk about a few very misunderstood, in my opinion, scriptures. Um, I think that today... Whether it's, it's a member of the Church of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints, or it's any other religion, any other Christian, these scriptures, some of these that are in the Bible, as well as, as those that uh, are in the other standard works, are so misunderstood. And if you take nothing else from today, please go back to your loved ones, your families, to, to friends, and correct them in what these verses say in the, in the scriptures about the return of the Savior. How many have heard and, and get rebuffed if they ever talk about the second coming? Oh, well, no man knoweth the hour. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that ever? Mm -hmm. Driving me crazy. Um, it's true, but what's missing? The rest of the verses, on, in each of these verses that speak to him as a thief in the night, no man knoweth the hour, we are missing the, the vast majority and the main part of those verses. They are talking about Babylon. They're talking about those who don't know Christ. And when we finish them, we find 
what is actually the admonition. I'm going to start with what I think is the most important one. It's from the Savior himself, where he said, It shall come to pass that he that feareth me shall be looking forth for the great day of the Lord to come, even for the signs of this coming of the Son of Man. Okay, so what are we looking forward to if we, if we fear and believe in the Savior, in Jesus Christ? The great day of the Lord, even the signs. And this is the part, like, this is the part for me, like, well, what? I, I don't know the signs in the heavens, and that's what he says next, right? Even for the signs of the coming of the Son of Man, they shall see signs and wonders, for they shall be shown forth in the heavens above and the earth beneath. Okay, and then there's vapors and, sm and smoke and all these um, things. A remnant shall be gathered. And in this last line here, it to me is so important. He that watches not for me shall be cut off. So it's not only that we can know the proximity of the return of our Savior. What is he saying here? We need to, right? We have a responsibility to. The Savior is telling us... <laughs> That no man knoweth the hour is not an excuse. It's, it's wrong. It's resting or twisting the scriptures. It's wrong. He expects us to be looking forward to his coming with gladness and to be preparing for it. And that's the main part of today, is to actively know what it means to prepare. It's not just, I'm trying to be nice to my neighbor. There's more to it than that. It's not necessarily that it's harder, but, well, in some ways it is. But it's, it's, it's clear. It's simple to follow. Okay? Um, the coming of the Lord draweth nigh and overtaketh the world as a thief in the night. Okay, we see that. It's in both Doctrine and Covenants and in Thessalonians. <clears throat> Therefore, gird up your loins, you may be children of light, and that day shall not overtake you as a thief. Okay, so there's a clue there. There's a key to how it does not overtake us. If we're children of light, right, if we are filled with light, then it will not overtake us as a thief in the night. Matthew 1, if you look at what Joseph Smith, the Joseph Smith translation is especially clear, there's more to it than this, but this is the parable of the fig tree. Okay, we're familiar with that. When the branches are tender, putting forth leaves, summer is nigh at hand. So likewise, mine elect, when they shall see these things, they shall know that he is not near, even at the doors. Okay, so here's another. Who else is going to know? We talk about children of light. If we have light in us, we're being filled with light, we're going to know. And what's the other word? The elect. The elect. The elect of God. And, and that's not as complex as it seems. We'll talk more about it. But there's another, another key. That if we are filled with light, if we're trying to be the elect of God, we actually will recognize the proximity. We'll feel it. We'll feel it, that it's close. Okay? Um, and then the one that's often used, and, uh, and I you know, pull the parts that are most important. You are not in darkness. That it shall that, And this, before this are the words that says that he comes to the thief, right? And that's where people like to finish. And because of fear, they're like, no, I, just, I don't want to think about it. Um, or because maybe we're attached to the world. Usually those two things, one of the two or both. But the rest says you're not in darkness. There's that light again. That that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are children of light. There it is again, right? Children of the day. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. Let us watch and be sober. If you do not watch, I'll come as a thief. Okay, that is actually the intent of all these scriptures, is that we are to watch. We need to watch, and if we don't, it will catch us as a thief. And to be caught as a thief in the night for that event is fear. That's fear, right? And that's... That's despair, and that's some of these harvests that don't sound very fun. But when we're prepared, what do we know, right? When, now, when you're prepared, you shall not fear. And so to know it, and to be aware of it, and to actually pray to understand the proximity helps us to overcome that fear. Okay, a couple more. Uh, love this quote by President Benson. There's multiple things in here, um, and we just heard about how intentional it is that this year... Uh, this is what we're reading, but in the Book of Mormon, we find a pattern for preparing the second coming. There's more here, right? But um, it is, it's critically important to remember that especially Helaman and 3rd Nephi is an absolute pattern for what's to come. You can read those and you can see things that are happening. Absolute corruption in government, right? Secret combinations. Ripeness overtaking. And it 
The uh, Book of Mormon is always taught on an election year. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, yeah. you mentioned always. that at the beginning. Yeah. 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 This, I didn't hear you say it. This oh, yeah. of all yeah. the election no, so, years. No, but people didn't hear it. Mm -hmm. so this one is interesting. Yeah. And it's all about government, so yeah. it's yeah. kind of fortuitous. Yeah. <laughs> they saw our names. Yeah, so there's so much in these... There's so much in these chapters that you, we could go through for hours and just talk about the parallels, the things that are happening right now that, um, that you see happening in those years. And that's just right before he comes, right? But one of them is, is interesting here in the context of what we're discussing today. And the angel said to me that many shall see greater things than these for the intent that they might believe that these signs and wonders shall come to pass upon the face of the earth. The intent that there should be no cause for unbelief. And this is the intent that whosoever might believe, whosoever shall will believe, might be saved. And whosoever will not believe, the righteous judgment will come upon them. And also, if they are condemned, they bring upon themselves their own um, condemnation. In Third Nephi, you'll see the righteous of the people are looking with great earnestness for the signs. Right, there's dwindling righteousness, but those that are righteous, you'll see it. It's very clear in multiple places that they are actually looking forth to the signs. So we're going to talk a little bit about the signs um, today and why it matters to actually look for them. But the most important thing is that we, we focus on being spiritually prepared. DNC 68, 11, and you shall be given to know the signs of the times and the signs of the coming of the Son of Man. He, uh, Moses 7, 62, and the righteousness and truth I will cause to sweep the earth as, with a, as a flood to gather out mine elect from the four quarters of the earth unto a place that I shall prepare, a holy city. Anyone know where that holy city is? Different topic. Yeah, What's that? <laughs> Highland, Utah. That is such beautiful, wishful thinking. <laughs> right now, Zion is where we live, right? Zion are the stake, it's the stakes of Zion. Bruce R. McConkie described that. President, um, President Kimball had that distributed, but in that same document, it describes how DNC 45 is absolutely true. That in, in the end, there's there's two capitals, right? Where are they? We've got New Jerusalem and the New Jerusalem, right? And the reality of what Jackson County is to become is, uh, is a wonderful topic. I, I was prompted to do a video on that, and, and you can see that if you're interested in it, but um, uh, there, your there, there are places of safety. If you just go to YouTube and put Matt Jepson, yeah, you'll find it, yeah. Um, I fought against doing those for so long, um, but there were things like he, just like all of us, we have our missions, right? And he, he kept telling me, just do them and don't vault yourself and be done with them. And, uh, and so I put him out there. But, um, last one, Moses 7, 7, 62, in righteousness and truth will I cause to sweep the earth as, a, as with a flood to gather out mine elect. Uh, we read that first part. And my people may gird up their loins, that my people may gird up their loins and be looking forth for the time of my coming. Okay? We really have the responsibility. And, and it's, it's summed up wonderfully by, by Elder McConkie. Our souls cry out, God hasten the day of this coming of thy son. And yet we know that such cannot be. The day is fixed, the hour is set. The signs have been given, have been, and are now, and will um, hereafter be shown forth. But our obligation is to discern the signs of the times lest we with the world be taken unawares. And he you know, goes on from that and says more, and I won't read all of this, but those who treasure up his word will not be deceived. The righteous will be able to read the signs of the times. Um, but the children of light who are not of night or darkness, as Paul expressed it, that they will not overtake them as a thief. They will recognize it as certainly as a woman in travail foreknows the approximate time of her child's birth. Isn't that interesting? A lot of powerful women here, right? Isn't that, isn't that cool? And there's a, there was a video that, that, um, that, that uh, I watched that you did, Tiff. I would, if you don't mind sharing a little bit about that phrase and what that means to you, I'd appreciate it because for this audience especially, I think that that's important to know that that's directed to women. Okay, specific to women. Um, 27 times in the Bible, it talks about a woman who travail in labor. 21 of those times is specifically about the second coming and I was preparing for a fireside and that hit me so strong. Who is Christ talking to? What man understands labor? It can't. 
I mean, as much as I try to tell my husband, I have five children, every time I'm like, oh, I just, something's different today. She's like, you can't explain that. You feel that in you. And so that hit me when I was preparing that, like Christ is talking to women and so many women are waking up right now and feeling these stirrings, these promptings that something is different. We can feel it inside. And it just, anyway, I thought it was really cool because the way the Lord loves women so much and why he's waking up women. And so if you're feeling this and you don't necessarily feel like there's a lot of support around you feeling this, keep going, you know, keep pressing forward because you have those promptings for a reason. And that has been fulfilled, that sign. You know that? What's that? That sign, the woman in the heavens, that has been oh, fulfilled. Yeah, yeah, we could go on a long discussion on that. We, bought, we had a, a specialist teach us here in this awesome. audience. Yeah, so <laughs> it's very exciting. But that tells us, that's a promise, right? A scriptural promise yes. that especially the women, I feel, um, can recognize that it's close. They can recognize the proximity. And... Who's read the talk, Sisters in Zion, by Elder Iron, President Iron, now president? What does he say there? He says, you sisters, like, he, he says, you sisters, your children, your grandchildren, will be part of building that city. He's talking about the New Jerusalem, he's talking about Zion, that welcomes the Savior. He says directly in that talk, you will be here. That doesn't mean to everyone, but this generation will be here to welcome the Savior. And there's a special role for the sisters an important role, um, just as we just heard. He said that the sisters will make up more than half of that city, more than half of Zion. And that, to me, I, I know that's true. He says, you know, he talks about valley, so also maybe references that man will be rare as over. So I, you know, many of, of my gender may not be here. But you're going to be here, um, and you have such important things to do. It's so important to recognize the signs. Okay, so, so how many feel like you have a pretty good grasp on the signs of the times? I'm not even going to really raise my hand. I, I do some of them. I do some of them. I am, I had no, I, when I started thinking about this and feeling this obligation, I started thinking like, I don't know anything about the heaven, you know, the, I don't know astronomy. I don't know, talk about the signs in the heavens. It just felt like daunting to me. Like, what am I supposed to do? Um, and I'm going to pause for a second before I dive into to what happened next for me. How many, how many feel that it's close? Very. Very. It's so close, you guys. I feel it through me. His return is so close. And the things that happened just before, which are a season. Like, we think of Mad Max, I think, sometimes, and we're like, this terrible, like, it just, Satan wants us to either not believe it, that it's close, or to fear it, and then to push it out of our mind and to stop just to try to ignore the fact that it's there. In either one, he, he succeeds. How many feel 2024, not that his return is, but how many just feel there's something in 2024? How many feel, okay, now how does it feel? How does 2024 feel to you? Scary. Who said scary? It's gonna be an amazing year. I love it. Okay, but I love honesty too. Not that that's not honest, but I love, I, I think it's important, all the responses. I didn't say daunting. That's good. It's heavy. Exactly. There's a heaviness to it. Anything else? Breakdowns can become breakthroughs. What's that? Breakdowns can become breakthroughs. I love it. The great, the, the hardest times are the greatest times, right? Um, yeah. I feel that we can be and will be empowered to help those around us. Like the sister was saying, that maybe you feel alone in this awakeness. Yeah. But because we're being called and awoken early, then it becomes our responsibility so to love and nurture those around us so and to be patient with them. Because I think we come to earth with our pre-earth life um, special gifts and blessings, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And not everyone has the same uh, gifts that have been given, but we can all be united in our desire to prepare to receive Christ. Absolutely. And it may come at different times for each of us. And we just need to be watching and be ready. Yeah, I love and that. And it is very exciting. It's exciting. And, and, and we're going to talk about fear and overcoming fear a little bit here, um, which that same fireside is so good on. That's available on YouTube, mm -hmm. right? Um, What's the title of it? Um, I think the future is glorious for those. I can't remember. Okay. Probably your name. <laughs> you send it to Colette, then it could come. Okay. Nice. By Charles called a voice in the dust. 
Looks like a book of Mormon. Yeah. Yeah. That's a channel. Uh -huh. um, and that topic is so important, but I, I, I love that. The, Elder Bednar talked about, about putting on the wedding garment, right? And being ready. And we're going to talk about why the signs actually help us to be ready to help other people. And, and I can tell you that, you know, when I, <coughs> I feel these words, warm, prepared, deliver, I hear them all the time. Warm, prepared, deliver. Some of the delivery, deliverance happens later, but warning and preparing and sometimes deliverance, right, from the adversary and from worldliness is right now. I feel that all the time. And the earlier we're ready, the more we'll be able to do to participate. And we'll, and we'll talk about that. But this is, a, this is a special time we're in right now to be, to put on the wedding garment, to have oil in the lamp so that we can participate in, in the harvest, right? There's several harvests. And I, sometimes I talk to people and I just feel or hear the words, they need the calamities. And I just love them if that's the case. Because as, the, as things start getting bad, and, and things and people start recognizing what's happening when you love them and maybe you've said whatever you can they'll think of you and they'll come to you if you didn't do anything at least love them and, and then give them everything that they could receive sometimes it is a little bit of warning like for them to know that you know it's close oftentimes is important because then when they start seeing things crumble they'll be like you knew this was happening I, can I ask you some questions can you help me Setting that up is, is distributing seeds. Yeah. <clears throat> it's interesting. We can be given promptings, but sometimes it takes more than one to act. And this morning, it was really interesting, but I had this dream. Maybe it's in lieu of this class or whatever, mm -hmm. but the dream um, showed I'm in a room, and it's a classroom, and a sister is teaching, and we're all enjoying and as I was coming upon this wonderful class that she's teaching, I was on the outside coming into the classroom, and the message was war. We are at war. And not to be just so peaceful about everything that is happening. Um, there's a war between good and evil. There's a war happening in countries. There's just different things. Mm -hmm. And as this Emotion. sweet sister, I thought, oh, I need to warn her. So I came in, and I, I felt like the message of the scriptures, the war cry. And so I came in and I said, war, it is war. And just as I said that, another lady came in from outside, dressed like almost like in an Indian outfit with all of his weapons. And I was like, oh, look at that. And here everybody in the classroom did not have their weapons. So then when I woke up, I'm thinking, okay, Heavenly Father, what kind of a weapon do I need to have? Mm -hmm. and, and it brought back to the faith and being able to listen in prayer, get your prompting so that when the real wars do happen, yeah. spiritually or physically, you are ahead and hearing the promptings ahead of time for your safety. And just recently I had a blessing even that said, when you're in danger, you're gonna know what to do. You will have discernment. And I thought, why am I being told that now? Why, why am I being told that I could be in danger? And I'm thinking, okay, there's a reason and a timing that these things are happening. And um, and so anyway, I, I take that message. So anyway, when I woke up, I said, okay, Heavenly Father, I know that was just a dream. But I remember the class when we use our spiritual weapons. Uh -huh. Because here I had no weapon and she didn't either. And, um, and so I thought, okay, the spiritual weapon is faith and yes. guidance. And so guess what? I'm going <laughs> to, it's kind of funny, but I, I envision that in this dream, all that were good were protected and unseen by the evil. Because mm -hmm. we know that can happen. Mm -hmm. That we can literally walk among that which is trying to deprivate our life and be protected if we're unseen. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, we well, send it back to yeah. wherever realm that was, that they are protected. <laughs> <laughs> and then do that for me in my life when I need that protection. Yeah. <laughs> it absolutely is faith, right? That is that is the, 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 the best weapon because the things that are coming, if we believe them, they're daunting. Yes. But what he's doing, and, and I, I just, I'm gonna, we're gonna dive into this a little bit more, but a lot of people right now are going through some hard things. I call them impossible moments. Um, Abrahamic tests, right? You think of Abraham, that was an impossible moment, right? <laughs> and he's doing it to strengthen our faith because we have to be able to see through walls ahead. We have to be able to believe that mountains can be moved, yeah. that we can do all things. 
You can finish your thought. No, no, no. <laughs> I just, I'm studying right now in Alma, like 45. And the Lamanites were so afraid of the Nephites, not because of their weapons, but because of their armor. So if you, if you kind of switch your mind, like, what is our armor? It wasn't like, look at all these things they have to fight with us. It's look at their protection. So that kind of, anyway, that makes you think about with your dream, like, we have to have our armor of God on us to protect. That's more scary than our swords, yeah. you know, but swords are, you know, spiritual things. Yeah. Okay, right there and then here. Well, I just want to say, Matt, I'm Angela Grantham. I started texting you one day when I came out of the temple, and I never finished the text message. I I have come to know you through Ezra's Eagle. Mm. I don't know if you remember yeah. my message. Yeah. But anyway, um, I, my daughter called me from school and needed me to come pick her up, and I never finished our conversation. Mm. But at any rate, I want to thank you for putting out the videos. I've watched each of them multiple times. But my husband was asleep before your videos because everyone that I was listening to did not measure up to his, what he thought someone should be like or look like to present the, this information. He would just kind of poo-poo everything that I was listening to. But this isn't because of you saying that you are this way, but maybe that's one of the reasons why the Spirit told you to go ahead and put the videos out, even though you don't want that glory for yourself. But my husband, because you're a lawyer, because of your background, he was like, oh, I can listen to this guy. So he will. He now listens to everything with me, okay? Awesome. But That's I just great. want you to know that. But um, to her point, this the lady that was just speaking about the dream, there is a blessing associated with keeping the Sabbath day holy, and it's being more holy and spotted by the world, I think uh -huh. is how it's worded. And every class I've ever been to, it talks about that you will not get the spots or the dirt of the world on yes. you. But ever since I've ever studied keeping the Sabbath day holy, my mind perceived that as like having a cloak of invisibility, uh -huh. that I could walk around town and like give service and help people and save people and no one would know who it was. Like no one would, would, would know it was me, uh -huh. but also that the, the adversary wouldn't come after me and attack me for serving <coughs> and doing the Lord's will, right? Uh -huh. So so that... I love that. that the that we can be more fully unspotted by keeping our covenants and doing the work of the Lord, that we will not be attacked. I love that. It's so good. I, and actually, a really cool thing to me, if you're a Nephi, <coughs> you see that, that some of them are following and, and, and preparing for the Savior's return, and some sort of getting puffed up. And the more they kind of turn to themselves, or they, they turn themselves out, the more actually they're vulnerable to, this, to the adversary. The more we're actually one with Christ, and we, and we are pointing people to him and not us, the more we're hidden. It's amazing. And the more power we have, because it's his anyway. It's his light. I love that. It's so good. So it was about a year and a half ago, <clears throat> I was thinking about um, the ten virgins, and those with oil yeah. and those without. And I also belong to another group, and I'm kind of in charge of, you know, doing like a little Christmas gift. And I was at... And, um, this is a place um, in Salt Lake, and in the potter shop, they have little lamps. And I'm like, oh, those are perfect. Uh -huh. And I got just enough, because that's all that they had, and the lady had moved to Alaska. But I'm like, and I call up Donna, and I said, I've got something here. And she said, you're always good at what you do. Just get them. And I said, okay. And so I got them. And, and I said, now, what am I going to do with these? And then it came to me that the ten virgins, their oil, you don't go carrying around cartons and uh -huh. gallons of oil with you every day. That oil is inside of us. Yes. And this stuff is our oil. And we put them, wrapped them up really nice, and she made up a little thing. And we put words on there like, Kindness, love, preparedness, listen, you know. Um, yeah. All the I attributes, mean, yeah. Yeah. And so this is the oil of the ten of the five virgins that were ready. Yeah. I love and, that. You're you're totally jumping ahead. We're gonna talk about <laughs> and let's let him go. <laughs> no, I love it. I yeah, love that I love that the inspiration, like all these topics are exactly what he's I know he wants talked about because they're in here. We're gonna talk about it. I love that, that thought. So let's talk really quickly about the signs, just for a minute, okay? This isn't the most important thing here, but 
we're, we're coming up on something that is very important. And we, I want to talk about why it's important. It's not just because there's a sign in the heavens coming. It's, there's some specific things. And, and this is, this first, we're going to, we're going to visit this question and we're going to revisit it before we talk about this sign and then after. Why do the signs in the heavens matter, right? One of the things, and, and the Lord, it was really cool how he showed me this and, and put this in my head. In Helaman 16, both 4 and 5, you see what Nephi is doing. He's out there teaching and, and you kind of see, I, I, I read 4, verse 4, and I think of countless privileges, blessings, and miracles. Like those who are willing to be to, to participate are, are seeing these things, um, are being able to be a part of miracles, privileges, and blessings. And that's happening right now. We are in that season. The, the veil is thin. Miracles are available. Revelation is pouring out of heaven to all who will listen, to all who want to participate. But then you see he goes on here, telling them of things. That's what Nephi is doing. That he's being told to warn and prepare others. And he's telling them of things which must shortly come that they might know and remember at the time of their coming that they had been made known unto them beforehand to the intent that they might believe. So this is kind of an after thing. So he's, he's warning and preparing. And he's saying, listen, these are signs that I've, I've been told by the Lord are coming. So that what? After the sign happened and, and things started occurring, they'd be like, well, oh, Nephi was right. Like, there was, he was right. So this is one of the reasons for the signs. And we're going to talk, as we, after we go through this particular sign, in a little more detail about other reasons, because it's, it's especially about preparing beforehand. But this is one of the, if I warn my brothers and sisters right now about something that they might say, that's cool, Matt, interesting. And then, if it was given by him, and things happen, and they see that, because I warned, and even if it's not a sign, it's just the proximity of his coming, or it's a, it's a witness of him, they will recognize both the truthfulness of the sign and that I can help them, and I can be a witness of him afterwards. Okay, we'll revisit that. But here's what we're going to talk about. How many saw the April 20, or, uh, 17, 2017 eclipse? Mm -hmm. August, I'm sorry, 2017 eclipse. Yeah. What was the feeling of that eclipse? It was so ominous. Uh, Ooh, it was oh, cool. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was across all the Salem's, which means he We're going to talk about that, too. It was cheating. They <laughs> <laughs> just had a lot of speakers here, too. <laughs> it was a warning, not only for us that can see and are listening, but it's a, a prompting for those that don't get it. Yeah, yeah. For us, it was a great teaching moment for my children. Because we were right in the line of kids. Awesome. It was so neat, and so we talked about what was going to happen and what happened. And so then we talking about signs, so it was kind of relieving because my children were young, you know, middle school, yeah. teenager. And so now the next one's coming, and they're on college because they're my two youngest. And so we're talking about, okay, this is coming. And it's being predicted, right? It's kind of like a prophecy, right? They're saying the sun's going to happen. And I'm like, it's really happening. <laughs> it's not that it's, it's science. It's yep. science. But then we can, I, I can switch that and say, okay, so all these other things that are prophesied by the prophet and in the scriptures, they're also going to happen the same way. It was science, it's, the eclipse that happened when, yeah, when the Savior science. was killed exactly. on the cross. So it, it was all God's connects, science, right? and, and that's what this is. Connect that trace. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> For me, I felt this uh, amazing feeling, and the thought was, the heavens are moving. Yeah. Interesting. That's interesting. There's a lot in that, actually. <laughs> I felt it, too. And I had like, this prompting to go up and see it with my boys. Um, and I didn't know why. I was not, in 2017, I was not, I did not recognize the proximity. I actually, I really relate to the brother Jared because I, I arrived here. And his story for me all throughout, I, I've, always, I've always just uh, been drawn to it. But I've been here for seven years, I told you, right? For me, I know now this was seven years of preparation. Came from Jackson County, was there for 12. Came here seven years of preparation. I spent the first three and a half years playing. Because I grew up here. I was back in my mountains in the desert. I was out. I was on the seashore like he was, right? They landed on the seashore. They were there for four years. And and um, and and then what happened to him? He was chasing for three hours for failing to call upon the name of the Lord. I had the same thing happen. A terrible experience. Um, a really hard trial. And the heavens were sealed for a month. And I never experienced that in my life. 
And, and I prayed and prayed, and, and when I finally got to the end of that, and I had an incredible, powerful experience, and, and he was there, he told me to quit playing. He chased me for, that was my, that was my three hours. And he, and he put me to work, and I started feeling this desire, this, this need to prepare temporally things. And I still didn't fully understand, but I started doing that. And, and there's a bunch of videos that we did, because I was uh, put in charge of that in our stake, and we started doing that. Um, I got the whole high council involved, and we got all the different, all the wards involved, we got committees involved. And, and we had, we had stake-centered cultural halls sometimes full of people for emergency preparedness, which is like, you know, it's supposed to be like a handful of people in a small room, but there was a fire there. And now we have probably 150 gener solar generators in our stake, 150 households that have that. And that's just a representation of all the other preparedness that they did. But I started feeling that, I started feeling strong. Um, and anyway, I, I read these verses and I started sharing them and I, and I found all the places where the, the, the uh, the leaders of the church have actually talked about the proximity of the second coming. I found that there's been more than 50 talks on it, uh, mostly in general conference since 2000. 2000 was an important year. And then in the, just in the last five years, um, there's been over 25 of them, so half of them. That was already an uptick, 50, compared to the years prior, right? You know, graphed it all, I'm really a nerdy researcher. But in the last five years, over 25 talks directly about preparing, not just referencing the word, the term, second coming, about preparing, being ready. And we're talking about President Nelson's Overcoming the World talk. That's, that's the most important talk in our generation, in my opinion. But I also started feeling like, well, what, what do these scriptures mean? What is, what is the Savior saying here? Like, what's my responsibility to look for for the great day and, and even for the signs? It was daunting to me. And so I just started praying, help me to recognize the signs of the times. Help me to know. And I prayed for several months this. And I had a few things happen. I had this feeling to really watch for when China invades Taiwan. And it was over and over in my mind. When China invades Taiwan. Write that down. China invades Taiwan. <laughs> but I had that feeling. And it was not attached to anything. You know, like, I could go through logistically some of it. But, but nothing. And then on June 27th of last year, it's a special day. And I didn't even realize it was that day. Um, when you think about Joseph Smith. Until later, someone pointed it out to me. That's that's how it's been since then. That was his martyrdom. Um, Just for anybody. On that day, in the morning, someone was asking about, and I'd seen the tab, like the tab, and this is how this is how unlearned I am, right? In this, I'd like the tab, and it's stuck there now. It's the tab. To really look at, I don't know Hebrew. I, totally unlearned. And that's how I know. It's part of how I know what happened for me that morning was revelation. It was not research. I researched like crazy. That's not what happened that morning for me. Because of what happened for me, and I can't fully really express it, I know of the significance of the eclipses. And I'm going to share just a little bit about what was, what was given to me, but you'll see that you have these two. And when I watched the 2017 eclipse, I was like, that was something. And then I went on and with my life. I just felt it. I just felt that there was some significance. And, and then I had seen some of this. I had someone asking me this question about it. I was like, yeah, I'd seen the top. I said it right up there. <laughs> and, um, and there was some significance about what it meant. But that morning, all of a sudden, I'm in the Talmud. I'm, I'm looking at ancient Hebrew, Paleo-Hebrew, and comparing the different versions of the, the, the top. And then he led me to the Aleph, which is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And this, for me, was really, really powerful. And I talk about what that is, but the Tav is the last letter, and it's the Aleph, really, right? See, I'm just... Aleph and Tav, right? The first and the last, Alpha and Omega. And you're going to see that those are created, those are painted in the heavens in these eclipses. That's what the Lord did. So, like I said, there's a Shabbat 55a. Has anyone read this? Shabbat 55a? Got to this one yet in the Talmud? <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm there and, and that, this morning, and I see the letter Tav means the last letter of the seal of the Holy One. It means, and there's a better one here that goes on. I don't think I put it in here. It means the end of the seal of the Holy One. When the Tav is made, it's the end of the seal of the Holy One. That's significant. 
And, and then I'm, I'm looking and finding all these things about what it was in, in the ancient, um, in the Old Testament. Job used this mark to form a cross as protection. So I'm seeing there's this protect, protection here. And then in Ezekiel 9, 4 through 6, I'm seeing that, remember where the, over the lintel where the, the mark was made? Guess what, guess what was made? Oh, it was the top. It was made. That was the protection that was the, in blood, the protection that was made by the Israelites, okay? And it's actually used sideways as an X. It's not, it's, it's typically on its side, just like that pattern is formed over the United States, okay? It's, it's found in the navel, in the mountains, in the heart of, facts, of the facsimile that we're all familiar with in the Prolegate Price. That is the top right there. And, and, um, and that has great significance. It's also at the top. You see it up at the top, too. But, um... Remember that this is important too. It shall begin in my sanctuary. And that's what that is representing there actually in the heart. Okay, so I'm in Ezekiel 9. I'm reading this and filling this. Um, I'll set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for the abominations that are done in the midst thereof. And, and then there's destruction. Okay, so there's, if we're not sealed his, there's destruction. Okay, that's what happened in Ezekiel 9, which is a pattern and a type for the second coming. Which, by the way, who are we in, what is our country in the in Isaiah Egypt. or Egypt. Mm -hmm. What happened in Egypt was absolutely a type and a pattern for the second coming. It has to do with sevens. There were seven years of preparation oh. and there were seven years of famine and destruction. Yes. Okay? Think about that in the context of these eclipses. Okay? And we're going to come, come back to that. But Then I'm in Revelation and, and, um, and there's multiple, right? The ceiling of 144,000 happened. In the end of the sixth seal before the the um, the seventh begins the angel cries having the seal of the living god hurt not the earth neither the sea nor the trees so we have sealed in the <coughs> servants of our god in their foreheads what would that seal then be it's the same seal it's the mark <coughs> on the top it's it's that that's that mark so it can be protection and it's also judgment because then as hap as it happens in revelation or in uh, ezekiel there is destruction, and it's commanded them next that they should not that they should not hurt the grass, the green earth. Only those, so they shall hurt right. Only those that do not have the seal of God in their forehead. They shouldn't kill them, but torment them for five months. Not bad, just five months, of, five months of torment. And there's a lot in that. And we don't have time to go through all of that, but um, and then we see and we know that the beast does the same thing. He has a counterfeit for everything, right? Colors of the rainbow, almost originally six in his counterfeit for seven. Think about that. Like sevens is God's pattern, right? Um, all kinds of counterfeits for everything. He has a counterfeit millennium. What's his counterfeit millennium? New world order? Yeah. He has a counterfeit for everything. He he and, and he absolutely has a counterfeit mark. And so the mark of the beast, and we're not going to get into that, but he's marking people at the same time as the, the, uh, the Savior is marking his. Okay. Um, the 144,000 are marked, and, and there's such cool things about what that is and what they are. 144,000 are basically the missionaries who do that harvesting when things are bad. They're in a place of safety, in a place of refuge, and they're going out and bringing people in. I uh, just feel that in my heart, in my soul, that mission and that responsibility, and I know it's ahead. Isn't it interesting that there were 144 new mission, new mission presidents? presidents. Yeah, I saw that the other day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Too. I love that. Uh, the Lord loves numbers. And if, if you he pay attention to numbers, you'll start seeing, you might start seeing 144. You might see, start seeing 1111, and that's a different topic. But <laughs> you might start seeing some specific numbers that are, are both warnings, and they're also sometimes just, I'm here, 111, I love. Well, three, with three, your three, seven, seven years of plenty and seven years of famine, it's 14 in Revelation 14. 14 means King David. Yes. D -D, so it, it means anointed or Messiah. Yes. She's a numbers person. I love it, I love it. And we're gonna, I'm gonna pull some things that will kind of go to that too. Okay, but these, these uh, 144,000 have their name, that name written in their foreheads, they have that mark, and in the end, um, they have great things to do. But if you feel pull to that work, that missionary work, the 144,000, study that more. It's so important. And a lot of people who are to be on this side of the veil are going to be involved in that. Okay, so, so I was seeing all these things. It means the end of the seal of the Holy One. It's a symbol of Christ's name. 
um, omega is the top, right? Because I because I we haven't dived in yet to the the the, the alpha part yet. Um, but separation at the time of the uh, that that top is made when that's finished, the second mark is made. You start seeing separation for those who have the seal on their forehead, which we'll talk about, but essentially means that they're um, they're yoked to Christ. It it, um, it means protection and deliverance for those that don't. It's judgment and destruction. Okay. Uh, we're not going to talk about that one yet. But so then, what happens is the same exact pattern is formed over Jerusalem. So the pattern we just saw formed over the United States, and I think Jerusalem and, and New Jerusalem, right? The first and the last, and the last shall be first. We are the last here in the Americas, and so we're first in judgment. I promise you. Mm -hmm. And then they are the, the first, and they will be last, right? And that's where Armageddon happens. We know that. That's where the that's where the two servants are when when um, when things are being wrapped up. That's just before the Savior returns. We will be safely gathered in already, years before that. In my in my feeling and opinion, yeah. You just meant over the Middle East, not over Jerusalem, right? It's over the Red Sea. It's centered on the Red Sea, and then it ends up being over the Middle East um, as as a whole. And it's it's significant that it's over the Red Sea. And we're, we'll pull back here. Let's look at them together, okay? Okay, now this is this is super homemade, and it's uh, and I don't try many of these things. I I specifically make an effort to not try to like. This is just what he gives me, and then I share it, right? Um, and then I move on to the next thing. But this, there were layers upon layers that I was seeing with this, and it was amazing. And not all of it came that day, but when you look at this, the red X's are those patterns that are formed, okay? And they cover, they do cover, just as they cover. Uh, these these church sites and they cover the, the heartland they cover um, really most of the United States they also cover uh, portions of those uh, spots in the Middle East but what you're also going to see here is amazing we're talking one in, in more than a billion chance that this pattern happens April 8th 2020 I'm sorry August 21st 2017 April 8th 2024 those are 2,422 days apart that mean that's pretty close to seven years but it's actually exactly to the day seven years in ecliptical years that's following the sun okay and there's this little remainder of four hours it's interesting it's just like our leap year but it's the same thing you see this draconic ecliptical year in terrible handwriting at the bottom <laughs> um, seven of those is 2422 days so those are actually exactly seven years apart and then the miracle goes on and you see 12 11 days, which is what? Half, exactly half. It's exactly three and a half years. This gap between those two being formed and then the same pattern happening. And what's going to happen over there? They're exactly 2,422 days apart. <clears throat> There's a critical season, so it's not like it's 365 days, but it's, it's, a, it's a big season. It's, it's, uh, it's a month plus that that can happen. The chances of one of these patterns happening is incredibly small. The chance of this, when you add it to it, infinitesimally small, and the chance of all three of them, and that perfect symmetry, that perfect pattern, it's, it's just unspeakably small. It is absolutely intended by the Lord. These signs are His. I promise you. I promise you that there's significance in what's about to happen in April. And when you look at and you think about Egypt, and you think about what that was, we just went through seven years. How did the seven years feel? There was some turmoil, and there were some things, but we've had peace, and we've had admonition to prepare. Has anyone felt that need, especially in the last three and a half years of that? Think of how many people in, since 2020. And, and I, he, these halves are important, too. And you see, think of time, time and a half, times, times, times and a half. That's seven is a time to him. Three and a half is a half a time to him and seven. And you'll see that you can put 14s together. You can put two sevens together here. There's patterns all through this. Like there's layers and layers that we can't go through today. But I've, I've witnessed to you that, that these eclipses mean something to the Lord. And, and I feel that what they mean is that we have just, we are about to end these seven years of preparation. And we are about to enter seven years of absolute 
turmoil, on, especially on this side of the world. But don't fear that. And I want to, we want to talk a little bit more about, about that because if you really look at scriptures and you really look at what's, what's prophesied, um, the saints are, have the opportunity, if they'll hear, to be gathered in far before the end of those seven years, to be in places of safety. Maybe it's Highland for a little bit. Maybe it's not. <laughs> this is where we really have to listen to him. We have to be prepared to go where he wants us to go to do what he wants us to do. Okay, so that same morning, the, the, the next thing happened for me. And this, this I, just, I felt this just wash over me when I saw it. Because when you add the eclipse that happened in October to the pattern that happens over the United States, what is formed? A sideways A, right? Which is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And it's perfectly drawn. It, it's absolutely perfectly drawn. This is the Aleph or the Aleph. Um, and it is drawn over the United States. And what does it mean? What does the Aleph mean? Yeah. What's that? The head man, the God man. The... It is, yeah, God. it's oneness with God for us. <laughs> it means God, it means oneness with God. It's Alpha. It, it, is, it is being sealed His. To me, this is a symbol of this time and this, what we just, what we just saw in Ezekiel and in Revelation, where we were to be sealed His. I had the strongest feeling that when that happened, and we, a lot of us went and saw this eclipse um, in October, but really think and think about your, your life, the things that you've maybe seen, it, whether or not things have been a little bit miraculous, maybe a little bit hard, a little bit pushing, a little bit impossible since October. What was the date? In October, was it the 6th? 14th. 14th. The 14th, okay. Yes. And, and note that we see now the, the eclipses go right over church sites, and we're going to talk more about Salem's too, but right over Adam on Elm and right over Kirtland, right over Kimora. Um, but then um, the significance of the Aleph is oneness. And I, just, and I just had this really strong feeling that and this is before, right? This is in June. That that period between October and April was a time to be sanctified. An opportunity where the heavens would be close and revelation would be just so constant where miracles would be here and abundant and where impossible moments would be here to push us to do that. To, to have to see through them so that we could be sanctified before. We could be sealed in the forehead. And, and I'm not going to go far into what that is, but think of it especially in the least as being sanctified, letting go of the world. When we talk about President Nelson's talks, there is such a pattern in what he said, what he shared with us since 2020. But you put them together, and you have the top and the left formed in the heavens, um, and it is the first and the last. And then that, okay, the I'm the left and the top. That's actually what Revelation says. If you look at it in Hebrew, I am the left and the top, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Isn't it interesting this is in Hebrews, or I mean, sorry, in Revelation, where he's just talking about his coming. He says, he's announcing right that, and he's saying, I am the left and the top. It's interesting, too, there's a comet that's going to be visible right during, the, and you look at it, it's pretty historic, right during the eclipse this year. Um, yeah, anyway, that's interesting, too. But, blessed are they who keep my commandments to... Um, who may have the right of the tree of life and may enter into the gates into that city. <coughs> anyway, that can be heavenly and it can also be millennial. But then you'll see, right? Passes right over these seven sails, a representation of Jerusalem, um, each of them. And the same thing happens with the next, the next one. Um, and I can make these available if anyone wants to see them. But same thing happens over. Okay, where does the X form in the top? Mm -hmm. oh, Missouri. Oh, yeah. It happens to be so. right over the New Madrid Fault. And if you look at the, the history of the New Madrid Fault, right when the Savior came, around 34 AD, there's major activity. Okay, What happened here in 34 AD? Major destruction. Mm -hmm. Even in 1811, there was one of these earthquakes. That was the last one that was major on the, on the New Madrid Fault, 1811. There's, there's eyewitness accounts describing three days of darkness because of what was taken up into the air and the sky and dust and things. The, the, the Missouri River and the Mississippi River ran upstream, came out of their banks, covered huge areas. 
there was major destruction that covered, and you see, this is the footprint of it. Huge area. Um, it's interesting. I, I'm confident that at some point in these seven years ahead that that is going to happen again. I'm not saying that I've received anything from the Lord or, or any indication that that happens on the day of the eclipse. So I'm not traveling to this eclipse. I felt really drawn to the first one. I did not feel drawn to this one. But that, that doesn't mean that this, this happens. It is, I do think it's significant, though, that it makes that mark right there. And years ago, I was just able to see how there's an overlay of the, the tabernacle over the United States. <coughs> at, so you could uh, put um, every part of the, taber the ancient tabernacle, overlay it on the United States, and the middle is, and when Christ uh, died, how the veil was rent. Mm -hmm. That's similar to yeah, what's going to awesome. happen. And that's awesome because that, that ties in, too, to what this pattern forms. Another layer of what this pattern forms over the, United, over the world is an interesting that Urim and Thummim is the same sign. This begins with, and so you'll see, when you see the stones that were on the breastplate of Aaron, there's Alpha and Omega, Urim and Thummim. Actually, we could talk forever about how I think that these are a preparation for Urim and Thummim. Brigham Young said, for Joseph Smith said, too, but said um, that every, every person was entitled to a seer stone that comes into this life but they would make an evil use of it. Mm. Yeah, there you we, go. Have we seen evil uses of this? Mm -hmm. This is the only generation in the history of the world that's had access to this kind of power. And it's a poor man's German thumb. It's not real, right? It can be used for good and evil, but it's a test. It's absolutely a test. Yeah. Um, the more ancient Tav is a dot and a circle, which, which would be female, and uh -huh. then the alpha is the male. And yeah. so that Revelation 22 that you did, the number 22 is that 1111 11 word. Christ and the bridegroom or, or a male and a female. And yeah, in Hebrew, female. all the letters make babies. The male and yeah. the female is 11 So yeah, so alpha is the male, female is the tav, and then they make the word. All of those Hebrew letters make the that word. That is wonderful. And so it is this study. A, a lot of times we, even your facsimile, there is a, a dove is a female, is showing a female eye. And then if you fold that paper, that circle, it's the Book of the Dead underneath the I head. want to talk to you more about it, this. Anyway, it's, it's seeing both male and female. We have to be at one, like I said. Oh, yes. That's so cool. <laughs> but you have to see you both know, the you know, you know, Elder McConkie said and described about the 144,000, by the way, um, that accomplished this work that has to be done. This is a perfect missionary work. This is not, we have great missionaries, we have great work. Everyone who served knows the companionship are not perfect, right? <laughs> but what happens in the 144,000, again, he said, these are high priests and their wives. Mm -hmm. 144,000 are man and woman, mm -hmm. equally yoked, mm -hmm. full of power. That is really cool. Now 1111 is attached to that. We're just going to point out 1 Corinthians 1111. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man and the Lord. In all of Asia, I served my mission in Japan, but in all of Asia, 11 is when they celebrate marriage. And um, in 2011, so many people got married on that day. And then um, Alibaba, guy who is like Amazon, he made it a day to celebrate singleness, that there's the opposite, the counterfeit. Yes, yeah. there it so is. So 1111 is a sacred day. Wow, you guys, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. 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 Yeah. It was 11 yeah. Yeah. It was at 11 and yeah. yeah. It was 11, but it was on the 20th because the 20th letter is a rush and it means um, a head man and it was worth 200 in Gematria. And it was 200 years that it, that Joseph Smith saw God the Father and Jesus Christ. That's awesome. So he was celebrating that. And then on 11 11 is when the Mayflower landed and they got off. 400 years. That's awesome. And the, the, the 22nd line is 400 years. And the message was 11 minutes. He knew all that. Because you know all yes, your talks. Yes, it was. Nelson yeah. studies Hebrew and Greek. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was just, I'm back to basics. <laughs> and I was just wondering, when you said, what's happening in April, were you referring to the other... Um, we have the second, we have the yes. third Yes, yes. sorry, that yes. finishes the April top. 8th. On April 8th, it finishes at the top, and so, and I'm going to, I'll go, I'll revisit that in a second. But what you see is that the earth is receiving the mark of Yerba Thumba. What is the earth? What's it to become? In the end, when, before, when this finishes in 2020, 2034, the earth has received the mark of Yerba of, of that Yerba Thumba. And it's also, the first and the last is, is formed, right? So you see the first with the left. 
And, and judgment comes here first. So does sanctification and the opportunity that we're experiencing right now. I promise you. We're in this sacred window. That happens first, and then it happens over the Middle East. And um, there's destruction and cleansing. Remember, the work of the destroying angels may look awful, but it's cleansing. It's bringing the terrestrial. And, and that's what happens here, that the earth is being prepared to receive its terrestrial glory. At the end of the thousand years, it, it receives its, its celestial glory. Uh, anyway, there's so much in this. Okay, so you see the tab over the, uh, over the U.S., seven years apart. Before it crosses, we talked about this, three and a half years is a half period, and then the same pattern is formed over the Middle East. So much we could talk about just with the first and the last, the last being first. Tab, tab means the last. It means the end of the seal of the Holy One. Is that being formed um, potentially on, in April. Uh, it's a mark in the signature of his name, and it's a seal for those who cry and sigh for the wickedness that, are, that is being done there, and those who are righteous and not giving in to Babylon, who have separated themselves. And it does mean separation. It means judgment for those who have not received the seal. And then the Aleph, it's interesting too, there was a 90% eclipse, and I just personally feel that it's an indication that it was not for everyone. Um, Everyone is subject to the judgment of April. I just that begins that seven-year period in April. I'll be really careful with that. It could it could begin quickly, but yeah. yes. So interesting. We were down at Lake Powell during that, and we were right in the totality zone. Yeah. So here we're sitting here on the boat. Is this in October? You mean? Yeah. Okay. And here's the two bunch of water skiing. <laughs> and then we talked to people. We went up to Rainbow Bridge, and we're like, "Were you able to see the eclipse?" And then. See that? So it doesn't apply to everyone. And, and I, I do think it re relates to the covenant, too. Those who are in the covenant, there's this opportunity right now. President Nelson said, countless privileges, blessings, and miracles. He was not talking of a future day to now. He wasn't. I've seen since 11-11, interestingly, which was, which was a really cool day for us. Uh, in, in, and it was kind of partway, halfway through this, but really since the eclipse, I've seen miracles every single day. Every day I've seen miracles. And, and it has nothing to do with me except that I believe. Like, we just, we believe. Like, we, we always think. We, we, as, a, as members of the church in this dispensation, we are so messed up about work and faith. Like, we think that it's so much more merit than it is instead of believing on him who has paid the full price. It's paid. It's done. Just believe him and follow him. And quit thinking that it's, it's I'm better because I do this work. So we wrap this up. Okay, why does it matter again? Just to finish this part of the, and we got to talk about spiritual preparation here, right? I'm not expect this part to take this long. But it's the Lord's plan, right? But why does it matter? It's that same thing that now, let's just imagine that things start getting bad after April. Sometime this year. I personally would be amazed if we make it to the, through the election without absolute chaos. Mayhem, just crazy stuff happening. But imagine those things deteriorating, and imagine now, this is Helaman, said in Helaman, that as Nephi was, was, was warning, that, that we are a warning voice, and that we say, hey guys, pay attention to the signs in heaven, right? Mostly focus on being spiritually prepared, but, but there's something that, that I've received that I fell, and, and with the eclipses, you know, don't believe a drop of this because I say it. But I would invite you, because we have an admonition in DC. 45, from the Savior himself, to pay attention to the signs, I invite you to go and pray about it. Is, is anything that Matt said real, like, about this? Do I, there, I do see, you can say, right in this prayer, that there's an admonition to understand the signs. Is this one of them that I should recognize? And then the so what part becomes this first part. If it is significant, and if the LF was intended, then there is urgency right now to let go of the world there is urgency right now to be sanctified. There's urgency to be all in, to be consecrated. Um, it, it would be the time. And it would be the reason that President Nelson's talking about urgency. It would be the reason that President Nelson's saying time is running out. It would be the reason that he's talking about overcoming the world and letting go of it completely. Of thinking celestial. Of, of becoming Moroni 748. Where we're totally possessed of charity. That was the peacemaker's talk. Every one of these talks is a part of the oil, and, I, and it's a beautiful pattern. And, and so it would be a part of having oil in the lamp, right? It would be a part of having the wedding garment. It would be urgency to do that now. This is the season. This is the end of the season of preparation in a way. 
Remember that there was, after that, was, there was five months that could be literal or symbolic of being tormented. To me, that's a harvest beginning. That's the, they need the calamities. So there's going to be so much mercy, and so many people are going to turn the right direction when things get bad. Others will turn the wrong direction. But, but for those who are prepared right now, that's the time to swoop in and to be like, see, look what's happening. I know what this means. Now, let me, let me help you, right? Let me help you turn the right way. Be all in right now. There might be a little more pain for those that, that wait for the calamities. But those who are ready now will have an added opportunity to rescue. I promise you that. Don't wait for the calamities. Be ready. Be all in right now. So that's what President Nelson was telling us when, he's, when he did this. And you'll see, if you look at the pattern from 2020 on, you'll see that President Nelson, first there's like three or four talks where he's like, prepare for the second coming, prepare for the second coming, prepare for the, for the second coming in 2020. It's a hinge point of the church. So <laughs> much about that. Everyone's like, oh, I wonder what that means. Okay, moving on. <laughs> prepare for that April 2020 um, uh, conference. It was so significant. It was a turning point. How many people have woken up since then? It's a lot. We still feel alone. People still feel alone. But it was, it's a lot. And, 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 and that's continued. But now he's saying, don't just wake up. As we look at the left, it also means have done with lesser things. Be all in. When President Nelson called upon us, and this is tiny, sorry. I told you I'm not a PowerPoint person, but these, like, at least it helps me read it. Um, he said, the gathering of Israel is the most important work on the planet, on the, on, taking place on the earth today. And the gathering of Israel, we've talked about what that really is. It's more than just, it's that, but it's plus. In, in the end, Joseph Smith said, I, when I speak of the gathering of Israel, I mean nothing short of bringing people to the New Jerusalem. And ultimately, that's where it culminates. But one crucial element of this gathering is preparing a people who are able, ready, and worthy to receive the Lord when he comes again. People who have already chosen Jesus Christ over this fallen world. People who rejoice in their agency to live the higher and holier laws of Jesus Christ. I call upon you, my brothers and sisters, my dear brothers and sisters, become this righteous people. He is calling upon us to become the people who are ready to receive Christ. <clears throat> If he goes on, he gives a, an apostolic blessing. I bless you in your quest to overcome the world. His urgency in this talk and in others is great. If we have ears to hear and eyes to see. And what does he say? He's giving us a part of the formula for the oil and the lamp. What's his words? To be able, ready, and worthy to receive the Lord means to do what? In this, in this parlance, in this talk, in that phrase. Who are... Rejoicing in their agency to do what? What are the higher and holier laws of Jesus Christ? Think of the temple. Yeah. Terrestrial laws. Yes. And what happens just before we approach the veil? Consecration. We commit. We've already committed this. We've already committed this to live the law of consecration. And we think of property when that when we hear that. And that the, the time's coming. We think about our temporal preparedness, and that gives us fear. But for right now, what are the words? They're so important. All, and we can, we can talk about this. We can talk about what the covenants are. We don't talk about other parts. But we can talk about what the covenants are. We covenant in the law of consecration all of our time and all of our talents, everything we've been blessed with, to Christ. Everything. All in. To building up his kingdom. And the last phrase, I don't think we even really understand it's the redemption of Zion. It's the establishment of Zion. And the fullness of that is when it comes again. It's redeeming Zion. And I love this, this quote by Joseph S. Smith. When shall I be prepared to go to Zion? Not will I have in my heart. And he's talking about the redemption of the New Jerusalem. Like I said, there's, there's a lot of that, and you can watch that if you're interested in that. But not will I have in my heart the love of this world more than the love of God. Sounds a lot like overcoming the world. If you look at what President Nelson says when he talks about overcoming the world, not while I am possessed of that selfishness and greed that would induce me to cling to the world or my possessions in it at the sacrifice of principle or truth. When I am ready to say, Father, all that I have, myself included, is thine, my time, my substance, everything that I possess is on the altar to be used freely, agreeable to thy holy will, and not my will but thine be done, then perhaps will I be prepared to go and hope to redeem Zion. It's all in time. President Nelson says time is running out. He expresses urgency. It may have been okay in times past to, to think of tithing of our lives, to think of 10% of our time and talents. The law of sacrifice is, is attached to the law of consecration. 
It's a pathway there. Now is the time to be all in. I, I promise you, this is the message that I'm supposed to deliver today. Now. And if you think about now to April, anything that you can do to be all in, I invite you to do it. Whether that is being in the temple, it's, this is certainly part of it. Being absolutely possessed of the spirit of Elijah, more than you ever have, <laughs> President Jesus, and focus on the temple like you never have before. That's a change. He's saying, step up, do more right now. Um, whether that's really focusing on the causes that are Zion more than anything else. And there's so many good causes and there's so many good things to be done. But the highest cause, have done the lesser things right now, in my opinion, <coughs> judgment is passed. Judgment has been passed. It is time to gather greatest work happening, to gather the saints together, to be ready, to be sanctified personally and as many people as we can sanctify, to be ready to go. Conference is April 6th and 7th, mm -hmm. and that's Easter weekend, and then Monday the 8th. <coughs> Just so you know. I, the season we're entering, you guys, the season we're entering, I feel, I'm on fire right now just thinking about it. The season we are entering is so important. We, in heaven, we, we were probably in classrooms together, as I said, preparing for what is about to happen. So what is that checklist? <laughs> I need the checklist. Of the things to do? Yes. Okay, well, let's talk. I have friends who have lost jobs, and I have people, literally, as I speak, I have been bringing food to them, because they are They're already so in tribulation. Ruined. They're already in it. Absolutely. And so I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is going to gonna get worse. And I'm like giving... Who's this is the personal tribulation. This is the Abrahamic test time. Yeah. This is actually, those tribulations that are happening individual to people where we are like just completely us and the Savior. Sometimes even just completely alone, like maybe the family like doesn't fully understand what you're going through. Where you, it's just you and the Savior. This is, these are actually mercies to get us there. The well, sanctifier. the seven years we got three, Isaiah says we're going to have three and a half years of warning and three and a half years of woe. So, and I think this eclipse is the kickoff of Isaiah. Yep. Oh, so we still have a warning. Three and a half years. No, no, no warning. <laughs> <laughs> warning is wrapping up. Dark. No, no that's, that's getting prepared. But President Nelson did say that, that he said something like, um, and my husband and I were praying about how to keep our family safe. He yes. said, if we personally, yes. husband and wife, receive personal revelation of what to do and how to prepare, our family will be saved. Absolutely. And, and you'll be directed exactly what to do. Exactly what to do. And, and don't feel like it's going to be that your family has got to be completely alone physically in terms of things that happen ahead. There's, and there's a whole discussion on this that it's, it's so much more covered and more um, directly discussed what happens in terms of safety, then we realize it's not, it is not myth in the church. Like, and, and, and I said that video that, that I did pulls together some of the things that I received on. There was a reason I lived in, in Jackson County for 12 years and I didn't even understand it. I, I know that I'm going back one day, but I'm not going back right now. I have no fear. I, know, I don't think I need to go run there. In fact, I think some bad things are going to happen there first, but, <laughs> but, um, but that's so true. Like, our, there is safety in our covenants and there's safety in hearing. And this is why he's telling us we have to be able to, again, a coming day, right? We, we, we remember this. It will not be possible to survive spiritually without the constant guiding of the Holy Ghost. We have to be able to hear him. We have to be able to be led and guided. And then we will be, we'll be fine. When we're sanctified, we have nothing to fear. And the more we're sanctified, the, what I promise will happen to you is that you will more and more feel the second coming in the millennium and less and less feel the calamities. Remember when President Nelson said things celestial? That's what he was talking about. He was helping us to see the millennium. He was trying to help us. I mean, he even referenced like the death of a loved one. People were like, oh, that's, that's, that's what, that's, you pass through that door. That's part of life, right? We have to be able to see things the way they really are. And that's the first part of this. We have to, part of being ready for the calamities is to see things as they really are. And you'll see, I'm not going to go through this because of time, but I had this, this feeling like, why do we need to overcome right now? Why do we need to be living the law of consecration? And these reasons came to mind that you'll see in the scriptures that when they are sanctified, Enoch and his people come down and, and it fulfills the, the covenant. 
for our hearts not to fail, to not be deceived, we have to be sanctified. We have to be, we have to have let go of the world. Um, the more that our heart is attached to the world, the more it's going to be rocked because the world's going to be rocked. Right? The celestial, Babylon, the more we're in it and the more we're apart from it and we're thinking celestial and we're thinking of, like, I want, you know, my children to be in the millennium and it's coming and it's soon. It's soon. Then the less those things affect us. Part of it is being protected. Part of it is all up here. It's how we actually see through it. Matt, yeah. I also think, you know, I can't remember in all the readings I've done for this thing that I'm going to do, but he, he gave us a blessing that we would be able to give up uh, some of the, the worldly things, yes. too. And I, when you said that, you know, all of a sudden I, I felt like I, I have to give up my play. And I know he did it with me, but there's, there's things that I just love to do. I love heirloom sewing so much. I'd have a whole room full just so I could sit there and look at it. And I have no desire. My desire is, I've got to study. I, I have it. got to change. And I think, I, I'm, I'm sure, you know, if you read your hands, a lot of you are feeling that, mm -hmm. that I don't, I no longer have those desires <laughs> that I have. Totally cheating again. Um, <laughs> we, we, we talk about Remember that. Remember we were all it's together. perfect. <laughs> yes. I know. I, it is so true. It's so true. And, and really quick, I want to say this. So you see, I'm not going to go through these, but to be fit for Zion, this is we read that quote. When will I be prepared? When I'm sanctified, to abide his presence, we have to be sanctified. We have to be ready to be terrestrial. All the bodies change. And it's it's absolutely scriptural that every body will be a translated body eventually in the millennium. Um, and so we have to be ready for that. For physical protection of the clown is to bind Satan. How is he bound? It's because all the hearts are free from him. And that's what this last part is about. And to increase the light of Christ on the earth that is actually part of his coming. It's the saints on both sides of the veil that do that. Um, Okay, we're tight on time. Any quick comments? Well, I, I just want to say really quick that the prophet also in one of his talks has said that the time will soon come that the righteous will be separated. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, when I hear that, we have seven children, and all of my adult children have left the church, um, and I have one in college and two at home. Anyway, but my kids are tied together. So the adult kids come to all the younger kids' plays and soccer games, and, and they have this this really tight knit where they support one another extremely, right? We were all together at my daughter's college in Wyoming to watch her play soccer for this just uh, fall eclipse. And it just hit me when you were talking that that was a sign to my husband and I of what will come. Elect experiences and they're able to show greater love and patience with those that are like in the yes. middle of it and being caught up in it and they're not sure, right? Yep. So even though we might be separated, it might be separated because we're being called up and given these special blessings. There's the separation, but it doesn't mean that we're physically separate. Yeah. That we, we, because of that separation, we in turn can go and labor and love more yes. diligently. I love that. And it's and it's it's spiritual. Everything is like spiritual and literal, right? I, I, I think that it's, it's already happening, right? It's happening right now, especially during this period of Aleph as I see it, between October and April, that, that um, those who are consecrated are more and more being separated. But then they bring them, because when the power goes out, that's all it takes to be to have physical separation, I promise you. And the power is going to go out. Yeah. When? That's why I know. It's here now. The power is going to go out. And, and, and it's going to cause separation. Um, and... and uh, yeah, there's so much there, but that's I, that's beautiful what you got there. Yeah. So I'm confused. I have storage units of all this stuff, and I don't know whether to unleash the world and let it go, or if I'm supposed to need mm. it and consecrate it because we're going to need those you, things. <laughs> you, it will not be possible to survive physically without the constant guiding influence of the Holy Ghost. You're going to be guided day day. day by day. Like that has to be your pro approach so prayerfully. You'll be guided day by day in how to use that. But I will say that. It's going to be a test, and the, and and you're going to wait gone now, and I have nothing. Like, it's it, it requires hearing him, and you'll get it. You'll get it day by day. Okay, we don't have time to go through this one, but it's similar to what we've been talking about. If you're attached to this world, the shock of this world going away will be immense. The celestial is ending. It is time to let go. And your comment is where we have to hit before we finish. In the end, everything becomes about our heart. I might talk forever about this freedom of sin and false beliefs. The more we're attached to the world. The, the, the less we actually can have a sanctified heart. It's not just sin. It's the beliefs. It's the Truman Show. Satan has put on us all these things that we think are true that limit ourselves. 
the, the judge, we look at someone, we just like put all these layers on them. They, they can't do this. They have this tendency. They're all false. Instead of seeing them as we saw them in the council of heaven, in these classrooms that we were together. In the end, we have to get rid of, we have to live in a terrestrial world now. We have to think celestial. That's what he was talking about. Mm-hmm. We have to see through that in ourselves, in both pride and in self, spiritual self-confidence. We have to know that in our fallen state, that we are nothing. But we are divinity, and we can do all things in him. We can move mountains when we're, we're, when we're yoked to him. We have to believe that our brothers and sisters have divine potential, and we have to be able to see them as he sees them. Um, and we have to believe in God the way that, that is actually the way he is. We need to believe in his grace, in the grace of Christ, that 70 times 7 is real. That if we're trying to be a good boy or girl, as, as Elder Bednar said, we can receive revelation all day long. All day long. We have to believe that with everything to be ready for what's ahead. But the heart is key. And if you look in the, and I could talk for hours about in the scriptures, everything is centered on the heart. He had heart power over the hearts of children and men. Captain Moroni, if all men could be like in the Moroni, the devil had no power over the hearts of children and men. One day as I was praying, I had this image come in my head. And you're going to see some very just homemade images that I said, nothing's professional. Except my son, who's a good artist, he, he did the hands, and that was a fun little opportunity to teach him about this. But I had this image that was like this anim- animated image of a heart. And, and this is where I want to finish this, because it has to do with sanctification. And, th- and even though it's simple and silly, you might not forget it. But this image was a, a, a progressive image of a heart that was a hard heart. And hands that were Satan's hands. They're red because they're evil, right? Um... And he was puppeteering this heart. He had control over it. Because this heart was possessed of the world and possessed of sin. The more you're in the world, the more Satan can tug your strings. The more you care about, this is an example, money. The more that a lack of money can cause you heart, spiritual heart failure even. And just can totally uh, destroy your world. Or the abundance of money. He doesn't care. Like You don't take either one. Can then make you lose your spirituality make you lose touch and have your body just control and just pleasure 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 the more that you're attached to me it's ambition it's possessions it's recreation it's leisure and gratitude right and then doubt fear and pride those are the ones those are sticky like those are yeah it's hard to root those ones out but what president nelson said in overcoming the world was this becomes very personal this heart is unique every heart is unique he said pray and tell the lord that you're serious about overcoming and then ask him what to do next. And when he comes Ether 12, he shows you where your heart is hard. And he helps you start doing what happens here to cut these cords. Now you'll see a heart that becomes a little more Alma 32. You're starting to have some sprouting in some places. Faith and gratitude taking the, part, uh, taking the place of some of these uh, hard heart things. Maybe we're able to say sufficient for our, my needs. Maybe we're able to let go of, of money and letting it control us um you see what what stays usually is fear that's the hardest it can be the hardest doubt and fear pride often stays um some worldliness and some selfishness but this is the process of sanctification and this image like if you just think like what can i cut what can i cut what can i cut next eventually grows up into a pure heart and it's also a sanctified heart and and even as we have you know a pure heart, we are sanctified by our act, by our, our devotion to him and by um, cutting these off strings. And eventually we become Moroni, or we become Captain Moroni, Alma 48 17. The devil has no more power over our heart. And we're ready to be, to, to be, to move mountains. We're ready to be part of the 144,000. We're ready to do all the things that need to be done. And, and we're ready to see through that stuff. It's paper. It's fake. Our whole life is fake. It really is. The people are real. The circumstances are just like an equation. You know, math plus contention equals what today? Like, I just see that in my head. What's he going to do? You know, and I, you know, some days are good, some days are bad. Then he moves on, and he's trying to create in us what is ultimately Moroni 748. And, and to me, when I think about oil in the lamp, sometimes I think Moroni 7, 748 captures it all. Praying to the Father with all energy of heart. We can be filled with this love. That when that we can be pure as he is pure, that when he shall appear, 
We shall be like him. When he shall appear. Isn't that an interesting phrase? When does that happen? It's not talking about after this life. When he shall appear. It doesn't say when we go through the veil, we go back to him. It's talking about when we rend the veil. When we are back in the presence of our Savior. And when he shall appear, I feel also refers to the second coming. We have to be possessed of that. This heart has to be pure. Has to be sanctified before he comes to be ready. And, and this is what I love. Was that lemons making lemonade? <laughs> it may have been the fruit of the tree of life. I don't know. I used, I used to draw and stuff. And it's supposed to shine, right? It's either, shine. Remember the, oh, okay. the tree of life? Light. And, light. Yeah, light. Um, okay. It's interesting, though, that Moroni 748, when we, when we read that, we think about that, it's 1111. I don't even look at my phone. That happens to me all the time. That's a message from the ancients. And you're on time. That's absolutely a message from me. Um, okay, who here has tried Moroni 748? And they felt like, okay, here I go. All the energy of my heart. I help me love this person who I just despise. They're so difficult. Like, we all have it. Think Corey Tim Boom and the guard. Like, anyone who knows that story such a, like it it can be so hard to change that heart for that those like the hardest you know circumstance the hardest people sometimes and that's not just about forgiveness she's able to have this feeling pass through her from him it's a miracle it's it's the enabling power but in the end it's so interesting to me that when i started praying for this it worked some it helped some but what i realized and it was, came by revelation from him was that until i controlled my heart until I actually had the full energy of heart, because it wasn't possessed by the, the Savior, or the adversary, and it was possessed by the Savior, I didn't have the full energy of heart. And God is a merciful God, so it's not all or nothing. As we cut those strings one by one, and as we put that thing on the altar, that next thing, that little worldly thing, and we say, this is, as Elder Maxwell always said, like the, most, the, the greatest thing we can sacrifice is our will. As we put that next thing on the altar and we say, I don't want this anymore. I can't overcome it myself. I'm really attached to it. It's a hard string. I need your help. I need that help to overcome it. But I'm willing. I don't want it. I want to get rid of it. Or I want to want at least. However we can get there. I want to let go of money. I want to let go of this addiction. I want to let go of this, this, um, this temptation. As we, as we do that, we get a greater... We get greater energy of heart. Our heart expands. Remember what he said? And it, Ezekiel was talking about the last days. I will give you, just before the Savior comes, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. He's talking about this. Like we need right now to have this heart. And by being all in and by consecrating ourselves, we can gain it. You had something you wanted to say. That's exactly right. Ezekiel 37 yes, talks I about see. how he'll give you a new heart. Same That's classroom. <laughs> Same classroom, we were all there. I love it. And that's talking about the second coming. Like you'll see it. That's the context of it. Hey, we have to remove it from Satan's control before we we are able to do that. Um, he cannot have that possession there. It's also how we see through the calamities, though. It helps us see celestially, right? When they have no more no more tethers, he cannot manipulate us. Doubt and fear disappear. Um and then this is that third bullet is what you said. Have you noticed how some things you just just can't get to anymore? And it's miraculous because it used to have a part of your heart. Like some things, like it's just gone now. And, and maybe they used to, right? Or maybe your whole life it's been something. Um, and maybe you see it get to others and it just doesn't affect you. This is becoming like Captain Moroni. This is cutting those tethers one by one. And it's a miracle. It's one of the greatest miracles that there is. To see and to feel personally that this was taken away from me. The enabling power removed it, right? As soon as one thing from us is, is changed, one thing is removed through the enabling power, and we act as we act upon President Nelson's invitation to go to the Lord and say, I want it, I want to overcome. Help me with this thing. Help me to overcome this thing. And then it's taken away. All of a sudden, like, I don't care about sports anymore. It's not that I don't ever go to them, but it doesn't, like, now if, if BYU loses my day and my weekend isn't wrecked. It's not in my heart anymore. That's a simple one, right? <laughs> We're taking those things out, and when you see it gone, it's a miracle. And no one will understand it except for you, but it's gone. It doesn't have possession of your heart anymore. That part of worldliness is gone. And that's what happens. The spiritual momentum that President Nelson talked about, 
She's like, it was a miracle. I can do it again. And we gain confidence. We gain, we gain knowledge because just like Alma 32, that faith becomes a knowledge in us. We saw it happen. We know it can happen again. And then when it happens again, we start this spiritual momentum. We start this as I see this spiral upward. And it, and it happens again. It happens again. And then by, eventually we just know. Like, I, it absolutely, I know he can change me. And I want to be changed. Please help me be like my Savior. Help me have the heart that my Savior has. Help me be consecrated. And it is absolutely um, a miracle. A cat confidence, I don't know what that is. Probably was that confidence. Maybe dictated. And Leslie doesn't change us. That's really good too. <laughs> this is me, right, doing this. Um, we begin spiritual, but let me see if I can interpret this. Um, your are thumb, right? Uh, and begin, Alma, like Alma 32, because we know the Lord has changed us and that thing. Leslie may have helped if she's a friend, but we can definitely use our, our brothers and sisters. And we can use that confidence with the next thing, and it grows and grows, and, and that, that, confidence, confidence, that confidence. See, you have your thumb, too. Right? <laughs> Wax is strong, and our desire to keep changing increases. Okay? This is the end of this, and we can talk, we can ask, answer questions and stuff if anyone wants to stay, but. Do an honest inventory of your heartstrings. What does the Savior get you with? The Savior. What does the adversary get you with? What does the Savior help you with? Because you've given it to Him. What does the adversary get you with? And like I said, fear and doubt are some of the last to go. And the more that, to me, the formula for that is to be more consecrated, to be more in, to, to really say, I'm about doing my work. I want to do the highest and holiest things now. The highest and holiest laws, the highest and holiest things. Temple is such a central focus right now. And maybe it's to work there, but it's for sure to be doing that work. We're building the army that is fighting the last days as we do every name. We're building the army that helps us personally, it helps our family. We're creating that army on the other side. And and it's it's so much more important than we ever realized. You think of Lord of the Rings? Anyone who's seen that show? What happens at the very end when it seems like this all hope is lost? This army of spirits comes and sweeps through and helps them in that final battle. To me, that's our brothers and sisters on the other side of the veil. We have to save them so they can save us or else the world would be wasted at his coming. That's, it's all tied in. Like That's part of what that scripture means. They, we need them and they need us. But as President Nelson said, tell the Lord you're serious about overcoming, about cutting those heartstrings. Um, and every heart truly is different. And every heart surgery is different, but he will tell you, and he will show you how to cut each of those heart strings. I know that the Savior is coming. I know he's coming back soon. I, 2024, I promise you, will be a year unlike years we've experienced in the past. I don't know every detail of how it happens, um, but I feel it through me. The promise that our Savior gave us, that we can understand and feel the proximity. And I feel it. I've taken him up on that, that invitation and that obligation, that responsibility. And I've told him that I want to participate. And I, I feel like, I believe that all of you feel that, that desire to participate, not just be a bystander, not be acted upon by fear, not to allow the adversary to mess with us, but to be actors who help others cut tethers, who help others be prepared, who help others see the millennium and not the calamities. Of others see the glorious return of our Savior. The future is breathtaking, President Nelson said. The future is glorious. The greatest manifestations of the Savior's power ever in the history of the world. Think of how he sees it. He sees it optimistically. He sees it with so much anticipation. He's full of joy about what's ahead. There's no fear in him because he sees things as they really are. We have a responsibility. We pled to come right now. All of us who are here, we pled to come right now. Every prophet who ever lived looked forward to this day and wished that they could be here. And they will on the other side of the veil. A few of them will be here. But to, to, to desire to be one of the three Nephites. And that's really what it takes, to desire to tarry. And the nine, you know, they did their thing. It was great. They were blessed. But I feel the three. I want to be here. I want to help. I want to do whatever I can. Wow. An attack, right? I want to do whatever. No, it's good. Don't worry about it. Except maybe this one is sound. That one. Yeah, yeah, there was a question in the chat that they wanted to see the diagrams of the heart again. Okay, yeah, we'll go back to that. 
but just to finish this, I, I want to be, I want, I, and I feel to pray this, use me to thy highest thought in the, rap, the winding up scenes. I, I don't want my agency or my selfishness or my pride or my fear to make me less used than the fullest thing that he wants me to do. Whatever it is, I will be done. But I feel like a phrase that um, the mission companion uses a lot, choose to be chosen, is really a phrase that we need to adopt. What desirest thou, right? That's what he asks. That's what he asks. And he wanted to tarry. And, and to be a part of that, to me, my heart is all there. And um, as imperfect as I am, um, I know he'll use me. And I'll know, I know he'll use each of us if we desire to tarry, if we desire to be a part of that. And if our mission's on the other side, that's going to be glorious too. To, to welcome him on the other side. That's, that's wonderful. But it's a time right now for no matter which of those groups, whether it's the three or the nine, it's a time right now to be sanctified, to be done with lesser things, to be all, all in. And if, and if you can do nothing else, just think of from now until April, I'm going to try to be all in. I'm going to try to cut tethers. I'm going to see how many the Lord can help me, tell, help, cut, help me cut through the enabling power. Because in the end, it's a miracle, and it's not us. It's not help, self-help books that cut those tethers. It's an absolute miracle, each one. I know that my Savior lives. Mm. I, I'm a witness of him. And I know he's coming back. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. All right. Questions or anything else people wanted? What was the, did they want to see the heartstrings?